G'day boys and girls, it's Colin back again for Assembly. Today we're going to visit a solicitor and her name is Charlotte the Solicitor. And if you're going to buy a house or for many, many reasons in life, you might need or will need a solicitor. So we're going to learn a little bit about that. Let's sing this song about building a house. When you buy a house, you often need a solicitor. British man, wise man. There was a song on Christ is solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand let's go and visit Charlotte the solicitor G'day boys and girls, really good to see you in today. It's a special day because we've met Charlotte. Charlotte is a solicitor. Charlotte, say hello to the boys and girls. Hello boys and girls. Now for anybody watching or even me, what is a solicitor? Well, a solicitor is somebody who helps people, sometimes whenever they've got problems, Colin. Um, so you might have problems in your family. You might have a problem, for example, um, with the law. You might have done something wrong. Somebody might have run into your car. So those those are all problems that solicitor can help with and, and problems in your job as well, whenever you get a bit older. There's lots of different areas the solicitor can deal with. And I particularly deal with a couple of areas. I, I keep well out of the courts. You might have heard of court and seen people on the news and seen them at court. But I, I don't really deal with that end of things at all. I deal with property mm -hmm. and estates. So property whenever you're buying or selling a house or um, a business and estates whenever somebody dies. So those are the two areas I mainly deal with. So if I'm going to buy a house, I would, why would I come to you? Well, you need to make sure, first of all, um, that the house that you're buying is where it's meant to be. You need to make sure... You mean that, it could be somewhere else? Well, the map could be wrong. We could, a chunk of the garden could be next door. That does happen sometimes. We need to make sure that the maps are all right. We need to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the house so you'd get a structural survey. And we need to make sure that any guarantees or any special documents that need to be in place for the house with the council or whatever are all in place plan and permission all those kind of things that that all comes up so what type of solicitor is that does specialize in that that, that is what's called a conveyancing solicitor it's just a fancier name for property and when you were a little girl is that what you wanted to do well actually well 
I loved languages whenever I was little and I was good at English as well. So it was a degree that I chose to do because I got to go to France basically. And I kind of got into, I, then I did the law degree with French law and ended up being a solicitor. Did you enjoy school? Oh yes, I did. Were you a good child? Yes, I was very good. <laughs> Children watching today who don't want to bother at school, would you encourage them to do what, to be good I would try your best, especially English and maths. I loved art and English um, and languages at school. Do you speak any languages? Yeah, I speak French and I speak Spanish. And a solicitor, is it a pressurised job? It can be quite stressful. So you imagine you're helping somebody along when they're buying a house and maybe they want in uh, before they get married or before a baby is born and if they're selling a house too and buying a house at the same time. There's a lot of people you have to work with, estate agents, surveyors, mortgage companies, banks. So it can be quite stressful and it's it's very important to keep people advised and try and take the stress for them. And obviously there's a lot of money involved, it's hundreds of thousands, sometimes it's even millions. So you imagine, you, you definitely want to make sure everything is right, Call, and you don't want to find out part of the garden is, is next door. Um, and then obviously to part of my job is making wills for people, which what's, can be quite emotional. What's well, a will? A will, a will is a document you put in place now uh -huh. that decides what you want to do with the stuff that you have here on earth whenever you're no longer around. And that's called a will, your last will and testament. And you can change it lots, but... Um, what if you die without making a will and you own a big farm? If you die without making a will, it's called intestacy. Okay, so the law then steps in and decides. It doesn't mean that the government takes it all. It means that it would be divided up amongst your blood relatives. Do you have children, Charlie? I have three children. Mm -hmm. The primary school age? Primary school age. But being a solicitor, do you type or do you write or...? I, well, I have a little, you met her coming in, Pauline, um, and to communicate, well, and Jackie, I can't forget Jackie, um, but to communicate with them, I record myself talking. Yes. I go through all these files, I record myself talking, and I drop that in there, and then it zooms into their inboxes. Wow. So it's very handy. I need one of these at home. Are you a Christian? Yes, son? I am. Yes. Is that important for you? Oh, it's very important. You have a nice smile about oh, you. Oh, thank you. Obviously, I'm happy from the inside, so yes, I do try and, and let that that uh, show. show, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you're happy, you know it. Let your face show it. Isn't that right? Have you been a Christian a long time? Since I was ten, yeah. A child, uh -huh. and I'm not going to tell you how long. That's uh -huh. at least ten years ago. Uh -huh. At least ten years ago. Yeah, that's wonderful. And how does um, God help in your work? Well, I think, as I said, work can be quite stressful. So it's it's good to have that peace from no one that you can turn to God with any problems. The Bible says, you know, he will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So that, that does help, that peace from within, and especially at stressful times. And also, too, I am seeing people sometimes at a very difficult point in their lives, especially if they've lost a loved one. So I try and act as I would like somebody to act where I'm, where I, in their situation, you know, yeah. and, and showing them uh, some love and some compassion um, yeah. in these situations um, I think uh, I think that has to come across too um, so I try to do my job to the best of my ability as well with God's help and I always good. try and act with integrity and honesty which is big as well very big yeah mm -hmm. do you have a favourite bible verse? a verse that is a challenge to me is do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where the thief can come in and steal that away or moth and rust can corrupt it. Um, Jesus says that we should store up for ourselves treasures in heaven for the eternal treasure. So what impacts me is not living for the here and now, not living for what's around and for the stuff that we have in life. And as, as you get older, you know, stuff is becomes important, but it shouldn't be our focus. We should focus on eternity and doing what we can here and now for God. Because you're born into this world with nothing. And exactly, you leave with, nothing. with nothing. Can you take it all with you? You can't take anything with you, and uh, you, you can leave. You can leave a testimony behind. You can leave your memory behind, but you can't take anything with you. Mm -hmm. You know. And the most people you meet get caught up with their with their wealth accumulated here on Earth. Well, it is, and naturally so, I suppose, you get focused on, on what you have um, for security, mm -hmm. um, but um, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't place all our trust in that. It's not what car you drive. It's not how much money you have in the bank, how many likes you have on YouTube, Colm. Um, you know, it's all, <laughs> it's, that all will pass away. That yes. all will pass away. And it's important to realise that, that after this, we have to prepare, uh, and the way that you prepare your will, prepare to meet your God as well. That's another Bible mm -hmm. verse, prepared mm -hmm. to meet thy God. Mm -hmm. 
Going through, went from, from being a child to becoming a full-time worker, did you have to study a lot? Oh yes, uh -huh. you do have to you study. Do you study big thick books? Big thick books, you might see some of them up there. Yeah, big thick books, you do have to study them. But then, then you learn a lot on the job anyway. It's like any job at the end of the day, most of your, your it'll be through experience. And if a child's watching today and they think, when I grow up I'd love to be a solicitor, would you encourage that? It's hard work. But I, uh, it's it is it is worth it. Now there's other there's other areas of law too. You might be a barrister or a judge. You, you know, know what's supposed to be a barrister or no, a judge? No, definitely not. What's the difference between a solicitor, a barrister, and a judge? So a solicitor you'll see in the office, and will occasionally if you do have a problem that you have to go to court, will come and support you and help you through that process. A barrister is the person that stands before the judge for you. The judge is the person who decides the outcome of a matter, whether it's a car crash, for example. So back to your specific job, if you're in a house and somebody says, my garden is extended into my neighbour's field and uh -huh. there's a dispute, mm -hmm. do you have to go out with a tape measure? No, we would get a surveyor out to oh, go with yeah. a tape measure, but it would be fairly apparent in terms of what's registered to them. But yes, things like that can spiral into disputes, unfortunately. Yeah. Our time's up. Uh, we could have to go back to school, but mm -hmm. I really enjoyed listening I to you. I hope it didn't send anybody to sleep. <laughs> no, we use a water pistol to pick them up. Oh, great. <laughs> That's very good. Charlotte, thanks so much for um, sharing welcome. today. Um, we have to go, so say bye to the boys and girls. Bye bye boys and girls. Thank you. Thank you Charlotte for your informative um, uh, challenge and story about being a solicitor. Really, really enjoyed that and the importance of having solicitor for different areas of life. Let's sing the song Silver and Gold, have I none? If you're blessed with silver and gold, then you need to go to the solicitor to tell them you've got all this money and then they will make out a will for you. And so whenever you die, you'll be able to leave it to someone or you could lose it all. Silver and gold have I none. And on one Thank you so much for watching and also for Charlotte inspiring us to be really good at school and learn to read and to write and to study books. When you go to law, the books can be really, really big and thick. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah, 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 yeah.